Hello everyone and welcome to the 66th, 66th episode of Career Podcast. Today I'm joined with Asura Art, is a visual development and concept artist from Hyderabad, India. Now, with that out of the way, could you please give us a little introduction on how we got into visual arts and design? Um, actually, yeah. Uh, since I was a kid, like uh, I was kind of uh, the bullied child, and uh, I took, uh, I found my solace in art. So yeah, I used to stay home and just to keep on drawing some random stuff, which is extremely ugly. But uh, soon I got into watching uh, anime and uh, other uh, other uh, shows, uh, which show the protagonist as extremely powerful. So yeah, I felt like I need to draw that kind of stuff. And since then, uh, every piece I make uh, is also kind of centered around the concept of power. Like there is some being or some creature or some person who is extremely powerful and dominating the other. Yeah. Since I could not uh, become such a person in uh, real life, I make my characters uh, look like that. And uh, with that, I slowly improved and now I do all kinds of art. Yeah, that's how I got into awesome. it. Yeah, and actually a lot of... Uh... Like one of the main shticks and cliches in like shonen, especially shonen jump animes, is like the protagonist is someone who's bullied a lot and um, is ostracized from society or class or whatever exactly. piece of you know social circle they are. Yeah. And yet, yeah, and it it shows their character development. They become the strong, you know, badass, you know, protagonist. Yeah. 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 yeah actually, I heard that a lot that anime inspired a lot of people, especially yes, those yes. type of stuff. My and, first, right. uh, like the first thing that uh, really impacted my uh, thought was Dragon Ball Z. So yeah, that that was mm-hmm. the very first anime I had uh, I could watch. Uh, it came on TV, so that was a whole different world mm-hmm. for me. Awesome. Yeah. And were you originally studying art and design, or you were pursuing another career path when you were in high school and you wanted to, you know? maybe choose what you um, want to do you know in the future actually it's uh, quite a stereotype in india like uh, uh, almost every student either chooses uh, a field related to medicine or they choose related to engineering and uh, the percentage of people who choose other paths are uh, quite little so yeah uh, in high school i was going to study for engineering so i was an uh, i was a science student then uh, after high school i just uh, I did not feel like doing anything, so I just stayed home for two years. And I did I did not join any college, and I just uh, I just improved my art skills. And after those two years, now I'm studying for uh, uh, being an accountant, chartered accountant. Uh, it's called here. And simultaneously, I'm uh, I'm actually doing freelance work. Yeah, I'm just trying to find more people uh, who might require my services. And, so, awesome. yeah, and since I'm just beginning in this field as an artist, uh, people actually cho- choose me more than uh, you think because uh, uh, high-level pros actually charge a lot. Yeah, mm. yeah exactly. So, and um... yeah, I get the base projects. Uh, the pay is little, mm-hmm. but it gives me a ton of experience and they give me a lot of feedback. So mm. that actually helps. Interesting. Me. All right, and well, speaking of your work, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And also tell us about your experience from the start of it until now. Uh, so I used to do a lot of character designing things and uh, most of my work, uh, take it from uh, like six months ago, is related to characters. So the main uh, main subject in each of my painting would be a character uh doing something uh, related to his profession or doing something related to what he does. So, uh, uh, but now I wanted to get into environment design as well because I, I was, uh, you know, I was shocked to see uh, awesome artists like Satish Kumar and, uh, you know, Feng Zhu. Feng Zhu is like the le- a legend in the industry and Sparth. So yeah, they have uh, both the subjects, like they use a character uh, as well as they uh, put that character in an awesome environment. So uh, I'm presently learning uh, uh, environment design and I'm looking forward to a mentorship I'm about to do with uh, Satish Kumar. 
uh, it starts next month so yeah hopefully i'll awesome. improve on that awesome hopefully you will and uh, how does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a design project like the the first thing i do is uh, go on pinterest and just randomly search for interesting images or uh, sometimes i have a good idea as soon as i wake up i keep that in the back of my mind and uh, search about those like if i want to do something related to a medieval uh, era uh, let's say i have this roman general feel when i wake up in the morning so i just go on pinterest search about romans and how they how their weapons are designed and things like that and then uh, i see the usual uh, uh, roman related artworks on art station and other places and i just uh, understand what kind of moods they were going with like uh, are most of the artists doing the roman related paintings in dark mood or is it very bright or is it very moody and sad so yeah i usually uh, take one of uh, the most used moods and then i use some of the images as references and just straight out paint something and yeah with right. yeah, multiple thumb thumbnails afterwards mm-hmm. then i choose one of them and render it out awesome and um now i actually want to talk about some of the artworks you've done i both checked your portfolio on art station and also um your instagram yeah and as you said earlier you said that the main thing that the subject that you can see in your artworks is that there's a really strong power dynamic between characters or maybe the environment and stuff like that um from the works you've done and i'm just looking and i'm just asking from the art station ones which one is your favorite and why uh let, let me check the i have i haven't posted on art station for quite a while uh i'm um, looking forward to posting more uh, after i make some you know yeah. some new portfolio pieces so yeah this the most recent one which is the the executioner ah oh. and uh, the second one is the art versus artist uh, that i did for 2020 oh. yeah those both are my uh, very favorite stuff Yeah, the concept of art versus artist is good. Everyone usually posts like those nine grid pictures yeah, with their that, stuff, that but was, you just see the whole thing. Yeah, that was my intention when I posted it on Instagram. I I actually wrote that like people already supported all my works throughout the year, so why would they want to know uh, what artworks I did again? So I thought I could make it a little bit more interesting if I made a whole scene about it. because i was the artist mm-hmm. i created them so uh, mm-hmm. usually uh, creators are seen as powerful people right like even mm-hmm. in mythology a creator is a, a, like a god so mm-hmm. that's how i represented myself in that painting so yeah awesome and um have you ever used your dreams as, as inspirations for your works yeah almost all the time like if you see a very horrific painting with a lot of dead bodies that's probably from my dreams oh my yeah. <laughs> i have quite a few of those horrific dreams i get scared a lot <laughs> is are you the killer in any of your dreams these horrific dreams um and most of them yeah but it's uh, it's more uh, um. it's more consequential like i don't choose i don't choose to be one but it's like i keep getting attacked by tons and tons of people and my only hope of survival is to kill <laughs> it's like a zombie apocalypse that, yeah that's metal as hell i mean that's not horrific that's awesome yeah yeah the the executioner post right. was uh, totally uh, based on one of the dreams itself and it is by far my best piece uh, according to me actually because the composition awesome. just works for some reason and i cannot replicate it even if i try again yeah awesome and um who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most the first and foremost i would like to say uh, kim jung gi uh, have you heard about him he's from korea yeah, yeah of course, of course yeah. he's like 
<laughs> way he draws without any kind of reference and stuff that used to inspire me a lot from all the way from 10th grade like 2014 15 time so yeah at that time we were not quite uh, you know we, we did not have too much money so uh, i forced my parents and i made them buy me the skim jungi sketchbook collection and uh, i kept on drawing uh, redrawing his stuff from that book yeah that that's how i learned anatomy actually yeah oh, that that really? those were the first steps that i took which taught me most of my knowledge about anatomy be it about animals or humans and then i proceeded to buy anatomy related textbooks and yeah but major source of inspiration was kim jungi mm-hmm. and after that i was very much inspired from feng zu and uh, most re- and spark and most recently mm-hmm. from uh, uh, satish kumar so yeah i got awesome. i got to look at his process and i must say his process is very efficient like i was uh, mm-hmm. i was really shocked the way he does his thumbnails and even my finished pieces sometimes don't look as good as his thumbnails so yeah <laughs> all right and <laughs> Um what technologies and softwares do you most use for your works? Uh, you mean tech? Um hardware like ah, tablets okay. or I use an Intuos Pro Wacom Intuos Pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a large large one. So yeah, it, it doesn't have a screen. Yeah, the this is the same system I I use for drawing as well. Yep. And softwares? Software Photoshop I also have an iPad for uh, uh, when I travel or something like that. So yeah, Procreate an iPad obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. There's very little other oh, okay. softwares. Yeah. All right. And any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for artists? Um I I I am I am myself searching for <laughs> advice related to portfolio and I don't think I uh, I should give any to the uh, artist but i can forward some advices i've got from uh, professionals mhm so if you are uh, going to make your portfolio on art station then uh, uh, we must uh, try to only put up the best pieces that we possess like you can see on my art station some of the older pieces uh, look very uh, uh, like minimal like they they are not up to the mark to become to become a portfolio piece so uh, we should avoid that based on what i got uh, the advice from satish kumar and uh, yeah and uh, regardless of when you drew it or what you think is your best piece should be should appear at the start yeah the, the, that's how that's the most important thing yeah we yeah i actually heard that oh sorry no 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 please Go please on. um i actually heard that Uh, as well that you should have like your best piece at first then your second best piece at the bottom then repeat you know third fourth then the relatively worst one in the middle like something like that yeah and what are you working on right now that can tell us about what kind of project project is it i mean of course if it's something that there's a contract involved we can skip past this question but if that's not the case what are you doing right now what i am doing it is actually a bit copyright protected but uh, yeah i'm just making uh, uh, you know keyframes keyframe shots oh yeah like yeah. the main uh, impacting scenes uh, that uh, that that are very important in any movie so those kind of scenes i'm trying to flesh them out making multiple camera angles for the same scene uh, so that uh, the director can decide which one to put in the final So that that's what I'm doing right now, and uh, I'm sorry I couldn't cannot uh, disclose much more about this because no, it's fine because I know very little already, and I don't know if I'm allowed to even share it. Yeah, yeah, it's better to be safe than you know. Yes, yes. Sorry, and yeah, I mean for anyone who's listening or watching who might want to know what exactly keyframes are, basically, um, imagine a movie production. is is basically the kind of the same some aspects of it is the same principle as making an animation like in animation you have like some special specific scenes in mind 
and you kind of draw them out and it in between those scenes, you animate the rest of the journey, you know, but those major scenes should be there, you know, those events that happening or a certain pose and everything like, you know, it's a whole collection of uh, a, a scene or a picture that will happen in that media. And um, like, uh, the, the, be no, the best example uh, to give is like, uh, if you have played any games, when the protagonist first sees the uh, the main villain, the main antagonist. Mm -hmm. uh, you see how their uh, the, them clashing off is shown in most of the cinematic scenes. Either the hero is in the foreground and the villain is in the background, extremely strong, something like that. If you have seen in God of mm -hmm. War 4, uh, you know the stranger fight at the beginning. i seen it on YouTube, but I never played the game. Ah, okay. So, yeah, the, the, this guy, Baldur, uh, okay, it's alright if you have not heard about it. But yeah, something like that. The most impactful mm -hmm. or uh, the biggest clashes between the protagonist and uh, any other uh, object in the movie or in the game. The... Yeah. And what area beside the area you're working on right now, which is art, would you be interested to explore and learn in the future? I I would like to get into 3D actually. And I would like mm -hmm. to do VFX, a lot of VFX, because uh, the only way to show power better than in 2D is to show it in 3D VFX. So yeah. Yeah, I would uh, I would like to get into it if I get the chance. And I'm actually trying right now. I've been learning Blender for quite a while. Oh, yeah. awesome. So yeah, uh, it's very lucky that yeah. uh, such a good software is completely free, open source. Yeah. And well, with everything that's been, that's been said and done to conclude all we discussed, please give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in visual arts and wants to get to the place you are in terms of skills of like uh, books, courses, anything that comes into your mind for someone who is here and wants to be where you are. What would those steps look like? So I think the first thing that uh, any person who wants to get into visual development should do is like, what is his most... Uh, like what is he interested in like uh, there are people who are uh, who do best work in sci-fi design and some people do their best work in creature design some people do the best work in alien world design uh, so yeah uh, they must first find out what their niche is like what their best pa place is and they they, sh they can directly search on google like if I want to become a creature designer, what are the fundamentals that I need to learn? So based on that, there are multiple tutorials on YouTube just lying there for free. Uh, they, and they can buy some uh, Gumroad courses actually. The, they are quite uh, at low price, especially for beginners. Uh, I do not remember the name, but I will forward it to you a bit later on. Uh, they, they are priced at $5 or something like that. And yeah, just keep uh, keep watching. Uh, like due to the COVID, I think the art station, uh, the art station learning is completely free, regardless of what kind of account your uh, thing is. Now it's your best chance. Like just go on to art station learning and see what the professionals are speaking about. There are tons and tons of tutorials by industry legends, and their uh, talks, and. Probably that they will give you a lot better advice uh, about how to get into this uh, uh, visual development area. So, yeah. All right. And I think that's about it. Thank you so much for coming by. Where can people contact you if they had a question or, you know, want to say hi? They can just contact me on my Instagram. And yeah, but how about I give my email ID also? Can I type here in the chat? Yeah, sure, sure. I, I'll put it in the caption, definitely. Type it. And, well, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in and listened. And till next episode, see you guys later. Bye. Thank you so much for inviting me, man. All right, my pleasure.